So for the second exercise, after the calves, it's time for uh, my hamstrings. Uh, what I'm doing is I use some floorboards to give me a little bit more elevation. As, as you can see, uh, it all depends on how flexible you are. But if I do not use anything as a floorboard to uh, position myself a little bit higher, then it's for me very easy to put the weights on the ground. So I'm going to stand a little bit higher that I can go as low as I can. Uh, for the stiff like a deadlift, it is the name stiff like a deadlift, but in fact you do not want to have completely stiff legged, <laughs> stiff -legged legs. Uh, you want to have them always a little bit bent. Always by the knees bent a little bit. It's for two purposes. First, you do not want to overstretch your knees. You do not want to put so much pressure on them that they fold inwards, let's say. So that's part number one. So by bending your knees a little bit, you avoid that. Uh, second part, and that's actually even more important, is about the functions of the hamstrings. The hamstrings does not only bend your leg, like this, but it also helps with hip flexion. So by doing the stiff leg like deadlift, and while you would do it with straightened legs, yes you have the hip flexions, but when you do with straightened legs you have to feel, you feel tension here above the calf in the hollows of your knees and not so much. Yeah, the stretch is there, but it's completely different when you bend your knees a little bit. And really more focus, less focus on this part, more focus really on the attachment here of the hamstrings. And this is something that you want to have. So as an example, start like this straight up, bend your knees a little bit, and then bend all the way forward. Go all the way down as far as you can then you feel much more stretched than you would have with the straightened legs which you really feel only here that's a really uncomfortable feeling bend your legs, problem solved second part of the stiff legged deadlift or the bent legged deadlift to make it more precise you bend forward and instead of just going forward push your buttocks to the back as soon as you push that back, you feel much more tension on the hamstrings. So you go up, don't go all the way up. This part is more lower back than hamstrings. So you want to stay here from this part, stretches as far as you can, push your buttocks back to really emphasize this stretch, hold it there for a second and then move up till here. Go further, tension is off the hamstrings. Let's go all the way down, push your buttocks back. Go up till here. Go down, push it back, feel the stretch and go up here. Uh, with this exercise I really, really do a good warm up. Uh, you, you pull the bar very low, from a very low point and that uh, can cause back injuries and especially if you go that low, if you can see it I cannot just pull it like this, I have to do this as a regular deadlift and then still it's pretty low and uh, pretty awkward so my warm up for this exercise is, is really up to par with the workout <coughs> that I'm going to do. Uh, sorry. Uh, another thing that I'm doing is, I don't know if you ever noticed or you were doing it already when you're squatting and uh, that you have elevated heels. So to bring more emphasis on your quads, 
you can elevate your heels with the squat to bring a more tension on the quadriceps. Now for the hamstrings, you can reverse it and you get much more tension on the hamstrings again. So now put them in front of your feet. Now it's completely different and you're going to feel it. If you try it, you feel it. You get much more tension on your hamstrings. So it's even better. So let's do this uh, warm up set. Start with regular deadlift. And as you can see, I go very slow down, really focus on that stretch, hold it there, and put it up in about one second, two seconds. All depends on how safe you feel. Feel it safe enough to pull it in one, do it in one. If you think, well, I want to have a little bit more tension for safety reasons, then I put it in two. Anyway, after a while, the exercise gets more heavy and automatically you're going to pull it slower because it's heavy. <laughs> and as you can see, I only do partials. And this is partials in the lengthened position. So they are called lengthened partials. There's another way of doing partials and it's in the shortened position. And in most exercises, they are useless. Like here, this is a shortened partial. It's useless for your hamstrings. Maybe somewhere for your lower back. But for this case, absolutely useless. So if I'm getting ready, as I'm getting ready for my uh, second warm-up set and also my last, I want to give you an update on my book about length and partials. Almost done. Finished it today. Uh, I'm busy with the cover and all goes well it will be for the printing tomorrow tomorrow I publish it by the printer first I make a, uh, a regular book a paperback and as soon as that finish I'm going to make uh, an ebook so for the people who like to read ebooks there's your option, but if you like, if you are like me, you want to have some paper in your hands. And yeah, I know it's it's a little bit different. I'm still from the old, from the old ways. So for me, a, a regular book is always nicer than an ebook. But it will be up to you what you want to order or not. And of course, you have to order it. It's not only about length and partials. It's a, it's a great book uh, when you're a beginning a beginner bodybuilder uh, or intermediate because it's not only about length and partials, it's actually how uh, the muscles work, how contractions work, uh, uh, motor units of your muscles, in what order and so everything in detail and I have also a few basic programs what you can follow and play around with, uh, not just for home, also for the gym, free weights, uh, uh, machines, whatever you want, some basic exercises, basic programs, and you have to figure out yourself how you're going to play around with it to make it yours, because that's the most important part of a program. Uh, the program should be uh, tailor-made for you. You have to understand how your exercises uh, should be done. You have to understand how your uh, muscles are uh, reacting to certain exercises. And I hope this book can help you. So enough talk. Uh, last warm up.
And yeah, that was my warm up. A warm up is a warm up. A warm up is just to make sure that your muscles are ready and you do not want to use too much energy for your work set. That's the warm up. It's nothing specific, nothing special. As soon as you feel you're ready for the work set, then the warm up set is done. It's quite warm here, not as warm as last time. Then I was really sweating bullets. Temperatures are a little bit lower, so. Uh, but still warm enough that I need a short warm up. So let's put the work weight on. With every exercise I do, I said it in my last video also, I have a golden rule. My aim for most exercises is 10 repetitions. Uh, as soon as I can do more than 10 repetitions, I go up in resistance. But during the set, when I feel I can reach these 10 repetitions easily, I go even more focus, uh, really focus even more, this is how I have to say it, focus even more on the tension. So there's no reason for me to just pump out the last few repetitions to Oh, I could do 12 or 13 repetitions. No. From that moment on that I think I can do uh, more than 10 repetitions, more than last time, it becomes a learning set. Try to feel where I feel it even more. So every time I get this, it is a learning experience for me that I'm going to use in my next set. So this is how I found also with with these little weights that I put under my feet that I thought, yeah, it was so easy. Let's see if it also works the other way around. Like with squats, elevate your heels. Now I put it the other way around. And yeah, it works. The exercise becomes harder. The tension in the, in the hamstrings, in the muscles become uh, bigger. So there's much more tension in the hamstrings. And this is something that you want. It's not just mindlessly pumping out uh, repetitions because yeah, everybody can do that. You really want to focus on that feeling, the mind-muscle connection. Also part in my book, mind-muscle connection, how that works and what you have to focus on. As you could see, I could do I think 11 repetitions when I found out at 8, 9 that it would be easy to get to 10. I started doing it slower and when I reached 11, probably I could do 12, but I changed it in an omni contraction 
from the late uncrowned Mr. Olympia, Mike Menzer. He tried this out as an uh, omni contraction. It's actually a the way he did it was as, as a rest pause, a rest pause wrap. But I like to sometimes finish the set with it. And what you do is you go on your last repetition, you go slowly down and you take three positions in a downward position. So for example, I go down and I pause here and I try to raise the weight, not explosively, it's not the purpose, the purpose that you have to get it up, because if you force it up, all kinds of forces in your back, in your hips, hamstrings are getting so great that the risk of an injury is really very, very, very great, very big. So you hold it here, hold it still, then try to lift it up for about three seconds. Should not be possible. You go lower, still under control, hold it again. Hold it, try to raise it again for the second time, and then go to a deeper position, hold it there, and again try to raise it for about three, four seconds. It should be all impossible. If it's possible, you did not go far enough with your uh, with the end of the set. It should be impossible. And then from there, release it to the ground. Set is done. So, time to rehydrate a little bit and go to the next exercise. And that's uh, the belt squat.